Sir, could you please... Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, you will ask the question, then I'll... Yeah. yeah. So could you please uh, speak us about why did this Durga Puja protest happen? What were the reasons for it? And could you explain what is the current situation of it? Well, you see, Durga Puja is a big festival for Bengalis okay. in general. Yeah. And uh, it's five days uh, festival. But for sex workers, they are not really entertained by the puja committees. Okay. As a result of which, huh. even if they are very keen to enjoy this festival, because of fear of discrimination, the way they are treated by the mainstream society, they hardly visit pandals or engage into any rituals uh, which are part of this Durga Puja. Yeah. And this is an age long, I mean, age old problem for sex workers because of their occupation. Uh, they are often discriminated in many other mainstream activities including puja. Okay. So this time the sex workers collective, huh. which is which has gained I think a level of confidence uh, as because its membership is more than 60,000 sex workers in the state of West Bengal. Hmm. This time they decided that they will organize their own puja. Okay. So that there will be no issue of going to other panels. Yes. But there is a big resistance they received from the local police stations. Oh. Uh, they said that no, we cannot give permit to another organization. Oh. Essentially, uh, they don't like to uh, uh, see sex workers getting confidence, organizing puja. It's, it's a <laughs> level of confidence which get, uh, I think, translated into puja activities. Yeah. So all these are part of empowering strategies of sex workers. Okay. And the police are the biggest obstacles yeah. as because they are the major exploiter of sex workers. Yeah. They take money, they harass them, they beat them. And the more and more what they are seeing in West Bengal that sex workers are getting collectivized, they are engaging with many other activities, mm. uh, they have organized their own cooperative society, they have their own cultural group. Okay. And now they are running one of the best uh, internationally known HIV AIDS intervention program globally. Okay. Okay. That is Sonagachi intervention. Mm -hmm. and, and so the sex workers of this organization which is known as Durbar or mm -hmm. DMSC. Mm -hmm. So they plan to have this sort of thing. And there is a wholehearted support from all the sex workers in this area and outside also. Okay. Even if it is difficult for them to travel from, say, North Bengal districts to come down, which is 700 okay. uh, kilometer away from Calcutta. Okay. But even if they, they over the phone, uh, express their interest, even few of them will come. Okay. So as a result of which, when they, are pre they have prepared everything okay. for this um, festival, okay. uh, uh, you know, you have to have a panel, you yeah. have to bring this uh, yeah. idol from the uh, idol for which you have to pay money well in advance. Yeah. So everything was done but police stands in between. Oh. So that's so that as a result of which they have no other option but to appear for the High Court. Yeah. So they, they first appear uh, in the High Court okay. and uh, sought permission for the Puja. Okay. Then the case was referred to divisional bench. Okay. But finally, court has uh, allowed them to organize the puja in a small way. Okay. So they said you cannot have big uh, sort of uh, clearance from the court. They are uh, ready to organize this puja. Okay. I think it will be inaugurated tomorrow evening. Oh by one of the oldest sex workers who is 97 years old. Mm -hmm. So they decided one uh, should give that sort of importance to mm. sex workers. This is mm. first time in this country where sex workers mm. are organizing mm. a Durga Puja mm. of their own. Mm -hmm. 
and now you can uh, talk with many sex workers who and why they are so mm. keen to have it. Mm. Though still now police are not providing adequate support. Okay. However, court has uh, deputed mm. three lawyers okay. to look into this uh, program so that sex workers can enjoy this festival mm. uh, without uh, any problem from the police or from the local police. That's, that's the process. So, uh, when I was reading about this thing, uh, there is, I heard that there is a ritual where mud is taken from the sex workers. Could you please explain about that because it oh. is not known outside this thing. Oh, I, I think while you are developing this idol of Durga, okay. this is a part of the Hinduism, no? Yeah. So that you cannot complete an idol without taking the mud from the sex worker side. Okay. That's a... Yeah. Uh, a issue which mm. means that that's what is written in this uh, old um, religious book okay so as a result of which uh, those who prepare those idols mm. they come some evening just collect mm -hmm. it's, it's a ritual basically mm. so as to complete the mm. uh, or, or giving life to the idol so it, you cannot actually instill life to the idol mm without taking mud from the mm. you know, sites of sex workers' house, yeah. like. Mm. So in one sense, even the, uh, even the old society, I think, mm. uh, thousand years or two thousand years back, when mm. the puja came into existence, mm. that time the religious leaders, mm. I think to pay respect to the sex workers, mm. uh, decided to uh, have this sort of ritual as part of the idol development. Okay. And I think uh, keeping that in mind, mm. uh, every year this idol maker used to come down to red light districts, but since last two years, sex workers were uh, preventing them, sunning them from taking the marks. Uh, I think it is out of grass that in one hand, you felt this is important for you to develop idol on, on the other, other hand when you appear in the puja panel then the uh, those who those who organize this puja they either look down upon on yeah. or really do not entertain <laughs> in one way or others uh, they are shunned mm. from taking part in any puja mm. uh, related activities okay so that's that's the historical yeah. uh, link with it. Yeah. So uh, when you speak about discrimination and about police, uh, we are uh, working with Dalit organization which deal with caste. So uh, the the police also deals the same way with them. So my question is, uh, when I was speaking to a lady, uh, she was telling me that among uh, among the sex workers, the majority would be lower caste, who would be Mondal. So, uh, is there something like that? Is there a caste-based uh, majority-minority thing within the sex workers? Uh, I think uh, this is very prominent in the <coughs> western part of our country, like uh, Maharashtra, Pune and others. Mm. It is not to that level uh, <coughs> high among the, um, Easter, among the sex workers practicing in the eastern region. Mm. Uh, but as a matter of fact, mm. perhaps sex workers is one such community mm. because of their practice, because of their occupation or because of the historical uh, facts or whatever may be the issue, mm. whatever may be the reason. Mm. I have not seen any community like sex worker who is really secular because you know sex workers coming down to these red light districts mm. often change their name. Hindu might be Muslim names, Muslim take another Hindu name mm. and they all engage mm. uh, all sorts of uh, uh, puja activities. Mm. That way, mm. um, they are one of the most secular individuals by culture, by practice and by attitude also. Mm. We don't have much data about mm. how many of them belong to lower caste mm. and how many of them belong to uh, OBC or uh, mm. Brahmins or upper caste. Mm. But our uh, observation is that uh, 
it like be just reflection of uh, mm. uh, same caste pattern in the society mm. uh, uh, we didn't have any uh, substantive data to say that uh, the leads are more but certainly the leads means lower caste people are there in the sex world okay and they are they are also in significant portion might be mm. but uh, we cannot say how much how big and uh, whether they are the dominant group. so you have been done any such study now we have lots of studies but we never actually mm. try to uh, focus on caste yeah uh, so when you sp uh, i saw that you were also i heard that you were also organizing against trafficking of uh, of girls so would you please explain how how, how does that program start what is your modes of uh, monitoring trafficking and uh, could you please explain about that yeah i think this is one of the unique approach to stop trafficking it uh -huh. is called self regulatory board okay this regulatory board consists of uh, sex workers representatives which is 51% that's the constitution wise this okay. board board has its own policy okay and then they start from uh, mainstream society as okay. for example it is presided over by the local government representatives okay like mla okay mps or councillors okay then there are representation from medical professions okay there are representation from the legal profession okay representations from social welfare board okay and uh, one or two individuals uh, who showed interest being a part of and uh, either is a college professor or a good ngo or some women activist okay so this board consist of uh, 7 to 10 people okay <coughs> and yeah. uh, the mechanism through which they carry out this anti trafficking program is that huh. for each and every new entrant okay they have to report to the okay. regulatory board okay they have to report means you see huh. uh, in our country hmm. and west bengal is no exception okay. as part of the uh, ministry of health family welfare okay uh, which is steered through the apex body called napo national aids control organization hmm. so we we have peer workers means sex workers who have been trained as a health educator okay. and each he health educator mm. is responsible to look up at 660 okay. sex workers in, in her locality okay she made every day visit okay her role is to make them understand about hiv aids but okay. at the same time they have to collect who are the new entrants who are exiting from the sex trade. okay only thing what they what the additional work they do mm. is very small that the moment they identified one new in her locality okay see inform to the counselor of the regulatory board okay so immediately counselor or the or one representative of the regulatory board come down to that side okay take care of the girl okay and then she is counseled they, yes. uh, she she will be uh, mm. the moment she is brought to the uh, mm. uh, regulatory board mm. her age is determined through x ray examination okay. each and every one uh, age yeah. would be determined it's okay. not just you are seeing from your io it is oh, okay. uh, young or it is under age and others followed by she is counseled yeah. if necessary she is put for 3 days in a short stay home okay. maximum okay. during that time she can feel more comfortable can speak her mind so that she really wants or okay. she wants to go back home or she wants to engage in any other occupation okay so depending on her wishes okay if she is major and want to continue then she is given all information about how we can protect from hiv aids how she can uh, manage her own finances and all sorts of things okay. there is a cooperative of sex workers okay. also okay and if she is minor she is counseled that she cannot join in the trade okay. and she is accompanied to send back to her home okay. or to her place of interest okay. it might be some hostel Okay. if she wants to continue studies or some vocational training okay. so on so forth okay so this has really made a significant dent okay in the entire trafficking business in the sex trade hmm. i can share with you hmm. because when i was teaching in the department of epidemiology okay 
in all india institute of hygiene and public health okay. in 1991 okay. the project was initiated this project yeah okay the sonagachi intervention mm. program mm. so during that time mm. we did a baseline study mm. uh, and the total number of girls below 20 years was more than 24 percent mm. and now mm. i think 2011 mm. And the study was, was conducted to find out how many uh, young or underage girls are there. It is less than 1%. So it shows how... Because nowadays, not a single underage girl can continue in the trade. The moment they, they will be identified, and they, it's easy to identify because this is the part of this PR worker's job. Yeah. So it has been shown a high success rate as a result of which there is a Supreme Court panel, hmm. essentially I am a member of the Supreme Court panel hmm. who are discussing about how effectively we can curb hmm. trafficking in the sex trade hmm. and this very model of self-regulatory board hmm. is now being discussed hmm. and there will be some, hopefully there will be some proposal which will be pressed to the hmm. uh, Chief Justice hmm. for incorporation of this model. So, uh, when you say trafficking has been stopped, so uh, there are people who oppose sex trade as such, like uh, uh, sexual work as such. So, when you say you have stopping uh, tra trafficking, what are the other ways uh, a person gets into sex uh, sex work? Could you please explain? Because there should be clarity. I, I think from our point of view, even okay. Supreme Court also has taken the same okay. standpoint. Trafficking is someone who is forced against her will. Yeah. So we distinguish between okay. sex worker uh -huh. who has opted to these occupations uh -huh. out of her choices. Okay. It might be economic, it might be social, whatever it may yeah. be. Yeah. But there is no coercion, there is no force applied to it. Yeah. So to begin with, you have to be very clear. Uh -huh. All women in the sex work are not trafficked. Yeah. Only our study shows because uh -huh. Since last uh, 10 years, around 900 women have been separated from the sex trade okay. through this regulatory board okay. in Sonagachi okay. by alone. Okay. And if you see, less than 4% mm. of uh, those who appeared for this mm. board, which mm. is more than mm. 3,000 mm. uh, newcomers, mm. uh, is less than 4% are traffic. Okay. So, Sex workers, volitional sex workers, and trafficked okay. sex workers, trafficked women has to be distinguished. Yeah. I think many people, uh, because of their moral standpoint, not because knowing the reality, are very much um, uh, in one side that no, no, we have to stop sex work. That means we can stop trafficking. Mm. We are not actually mm. uh, doing their life because yeah. that's far from the reality. Mm. Women, out of limited choices, mm. say a illiterate, mm. with less marketable skill, mm. when women came down to city, mm. what are options left to them? Mm. She could be some domestic worker, mm. she could be some, uh, we call it um, uh, construction worker, support, yeah. actually yeah. we call it commonly jogare, that yeah. means who, who support supports the country. Yeah. Or can be sex worker. Yeah. And out of uh, three or four choices, mm. many of them opted to sex work as because it is less laborious mm. and they can earn better money than yeah. a domestic workers. And no one has the right to force yeah. someone uh, that being a citizen of the country cannot say, no, 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 you should not do it because I consider it is immoral. You cannot impose your ideas. Yeah. So we, we distinguish two things. Mm. We are very much against trafficking. Yeah. This is a heinous crime mm. and we should stop it to happen. Mm. But at the same time, mm. we cannot force someone to leave occupation. That will be also a sort of trafficking because yeah. you see, if I force you to do something yeah. uh, against your will, that's the basic, uh, I think, definition of trafficking. Yes. So, uh, this is the same point that Nalini Jamila, a sex worker from Kerala, wrote in her autobiography. Yeah. So. Uh, but the Dalit, Dalit feminists, like the lower caste feminists, are saying there are uh, the major outside 
uh, maybe I, I don't know about Calcutta. From what I know, there were like lots of mandal also here, but uh, the majority of them are lower caste. So uh, is uh, so how uh, how does that question come into this thing? So is is it because they are lower caste? That is the question. That the government is not doing anything towards them. That the government like like they are sex workers. That is a stereotype. Also, they are lower caste. That is another stereotype. So, when these both stereotypes combine together, how? Like for instance, I heard that when you when you conducted some program in uh, I, in the 90s, you you uh, the government did not allow you to do it. So, how does how, how does sexual workers organizing become a problem? How does those I things think, become a problem? Right. What you are saying, I think there is a lot of sense in it. Hmm. If you see in hmm. our society, forget about sex worker for hmm. the time being, hmm. persons belonging to lower caste hmm. has less opportunities hmm. and less, uh, I, I think, access to education and career building opportunities. Yes, yes. So you will find uh, till today, hmm. even all this reservation, etc., hmm. etc., in place, uh, most of these sex workers, uh, most of these women or men belonging to the lower caste mm. uh, have access to low paid job, yeah. less skilled job. Mm. And from that point of view, mm. sex work is mm. not only uh, uh, a low skilled job, mm. but it is a stigmatized job also. Mm. Uh, so it requires lot of courage mm. and strength, inner strength in the minds of those women to accept sex work. Yeah. That way, I feel mm. these women are one sort of entrepreneur mm. because they decided for themselves yeah. that why I should work yeah. uh, eight hours mm. a day mm. in a, under the open sun yeah. and carrying headloads of uh, bricks and um, mm. cements mm. uh, and for which I get a pittance. Mm. Uh, and if I get better sum of money, mm. which is required, every every human being mm. wants to earn more money, yeah. which includes you and me also. Yes. I am not going to do something uh, or I can leave something and go for a higher income job. Yes. What's wrong with these women? Of course. If they find that we paid better, mm. I think they have all the rights to do that. Of course. Because you feel it is immoral, ah. quote and unquote, from your own moral standpoint, yeah. well, you may not join this trade, that's up to you, but yeah. uh, but but you cannot stop someone to do it. Yeah, that's our basic, I think that goes against the basic tenets of human rights issue. Yeah. 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 So, uh, could you please explain more about the modes of discrimination that sex workers face? Well, yeah. if, if I start you talking this story, <laughs> even you see when I started, when you started this program, under All India Institute of Hygiene and Public Health, which is a premier public health institute in Southeast Asia. Okay. It's under Ministry of Health. Okay. So, side by side, you wanted to uh, help these children of the sex workers to get admitted in the school. Okay. And it took 10 years to help these children to get admitted because mm. none of these school uh, authorities wanted to get them admitted. It's not just sex workers, even the children of the sex workers. Yeah. And if you say about sex workers, because many of the sex workers who are illiterate, huh. at points of time they wanted to huh. have some education. informal education. Okay. And when you started that informal education session huh. in the heart of the red light districts, huh. by third day huh. it was ransacked by the local goons and boys and they uh, they, they didn't allow us to start even mm. your education program for the sex workers mm. because they felt that if they are educated then they will not listen to them that means their vested interest will mm. be compromised mm. and in a country where education is considered as a rights yeah. but for sex workers nobody bothers and we, we had to run from pillar to post to restart that education program and at that time, it was the CPM government, this Communist Party was in power. It took six months to reach out to Biman Bose, who is now the secretary. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And after long persuasion, when he visited this red light district, then the moment he was surrounded by the sex workers who wanted to study. 
so that actually uh, influenced him uh-huh. very much and finally he give this uh, sort of sort of endorsement that it should continue so so but but if you look at this uh-huh. tomorrow if you run a non formal school uh-huh. for other communities uh-huh. you will be respected uh-huh. and uh-huh. other things but why do you do it sex workers yeah. you just think of uh-huh. how a and, and it's for uh, it was at that point unbelievable yeah. second i am given example uh-huh. when the sex workers wanted to uh-huh. have their own cooperative society okay. like micro credit and others you know okay. because they were some from attending any uh, insurance company or banks okay yeah. they cannot open banks as because they could not show their identity card that's one thing and other way okay. the moment they will enter and will say i am from this address uh-huh. you know all these people will start uh, laughing at her and the way they will uh, ne- treat her okay. that will make her enough not to come second time mm-hmm. and they were so they were uh, very much dependent on uh, money lenders mm-hmm. who are this big uh, great uh, i i said the money suckers i should say mm-hmm. and if if i uh, i just once i calculated the interest rate was 300% minimum per annum when they take loan from this money lender so when you try to have this sort of cooperative society you see the first government official said no we cannot allow sex workers to have their cooperative society because they don't have the good moral character and it took one year to they said no we cannot do this and going from I mean, 2 and 4 uh, this way that way finally we had to convince the minister who essentially ultimately took uh, uh, took steps to change that clause there are some clause okay uh, to get this uh, cooperative society register there are hundreds such hmm. incidents uh, yeah. some will not even believe how we, even when the cooperative society started all this money lenders hmm. attack them throw bombs oh. so we had to close down that uh, cooperative society for couple of uh, months hmm. after which again with with the help of a higher policy level of people we could start that in the 97 hmm. this sex workers collective first organized their national conference okay that time all various uh, so called uh, social activists women's groups and others there is all you and cry went down to uh, this that time the Uh, president and the vice president of uh, india huh. uh, to to stop it happen okay. and they didn't get police uh, sort of support and the clearance for the police station no okay finally with the help of an uh, minister in the cpm who was very supportive with okay. subhas chakraborty who is no more okay he is the uh, education ministers mm. but we, we basically wanted to have it in this Salt Lake Stadium, which is one mm. of the biggest stadium, because we invited more than ten, fifteen thousand sex workers who wanted to attend that. Mm. Around the world? No, around the country only. It was a national conference. Okay. And you just think of the reasons for this sort that allowing sex workers to have their conference means this will uh, help pampering sex workers and um, uh, and. Um, Hmm. it should not uh, be allowed uh, even if they are citizen of this country okay. so you just think rights to association was uh, and then whole police and others didn't uh, they didn't uh, allow us to do that oh. it was the reason and it after long battle and others we could do it in the last moment and uh, day before uh, i think night before hmm. we finally with this was chakraborty hmm. who then said that uh, well i what i can do if you can come the night before hmm. because this stadium is under my jurisdiction hmm. so i can allow you to function okay. but uh, rest i cannot talk about because is the police and administrations all this permission so so i just given an example hmm. how difficult 
it became for a sex workers to have the same activities uh-huh. which is not only permissible which are considered as the rights of the citizen mm. which is enshrined in our constitutions yeah. the right to associate rights to educate rights to have your own activities even yeah. the puja is no exception yeah. that's what i'm talking so this organization is become large the, you have organized sex workers not, uh, through education through providing them savings through, uh, through all those organization now you are contesting a, a festival also a popular festival yeah so uh, uh, also when you when it comes to uh, a mode of discrimination one of the questions is so there are these pimps in between sex workers so was there any such problems like with pimps taking all the money sex workers not getting any money listen huh. <coughs> as it is a uh, unregulated mm. uh, and it's not part of unorganized labor sector not considered but they are part of unorganized labor sector in the recent past the unorganized labor movement mm. which are uh, headed by like uh, Uruna Roy and Nikhil okay. and others they, they invited sex workers collective to be part of it and we are uh, DMS is a part of uh, uh, unorganized labor workers movement in the country they are part of the national okay. uh, new trade union initiative okay but but what i'm going to say uh, that that uh, your question was uh, about pimps pimps yeah so what has happened now the major i think uh, uh, challenges in this work is police and the local means okay and to begin with there are many uh, madams and middlemen middlemen are those who essentially make contract on behalf of the sex workers okay. right so they meet with the clients and make a deal okay. and here everything was standardized like 25% goes to the uh, okay. pimps which is little higher sides but over the period what has happened when dmsc enter into this arena means they get collective highs and others mm-hmm. i can share with you this 92 data mm-hmm. this baseline data mm-hmm. that time self employed sex workers was less than 20 percent oh. mostly was under madam okay uh, or they call it adhya system that is 50 50 okay. sort of whatever she earns goes 50 percent to the madam okay i can tell you the 2011 data which shows 60 percent of them are now self-employed that means yeah, she doesn't have to depend she actually hire a room and yeah. essentially do whatever she likes to do but for to begin with foreign women coming from a, a rural background having no money and others mm-hmm. still it is a challenge that maybe couple of months to years she has to work under madam yeah. so we are actually trying to force that system mm. uh, in such a way that more and more this system can be obliterated yeah. yeah. it has been extremely successful in other red light districts like Bo Bajar. Mm. there are five big red light districts Oh. where 95% of them are self employed okay. like kalighat and chetla okay uh, here it is increasing oh. maybe uh, now i said 2011 it oh. was 60 plus percent it, it's going to be yeah. more and more in the over the period of time but that requires the collective strength of the sex workers you have to allow the sex workers oh to get collectivized and exert their rights as a citizen of the country. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, mm. the biggest challenge of this battle is the police and the existing laws, which mm. is called ITPM, oh. which empowers police mm. and disempowers sex workers. And they use it. ITPA? To, yeah, Immoral Traffic Prevention Act. Okay, okay. What are the loopholes in the law? This act says that any act, any work surrounding sex work are mm. illegal like soliciting illegal mm. like living on the earnings of the sex worker is also illegal mm. if it is 18 years plus okay so the, the 10 of the boys went to the court which is pil uh, is in the high court then mm. that means you are not allowing sex worker kids to go beyond school because at the age of 18 months and Will mm. you just complete the 12 standard? Yes, yes. Then, then I have to pay money for my son to go to colleges. Yes. And the law itself prevent 
I think this is extremely discriminatory yeah. for them to go to the uh, higher education and career building. So oh. that's why they want to... Uh, there are similar sort of things. If you have a brothel like uh, within 200 years of a oh. temple or any school. But oh. the problem is that all red light districts was at points of time, time in the outskirt of the city. But okay. at the city grow. Uh, so everything come close yeah, to that. Yeah, As yeah. a result of which you start one school close by. Okay. But that became, that made them illegal. Yeah. Even, even though to begin with they, they, they found that clause hmm. of the act was not illegal. Yes. So, and there are also uh, power to 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 police hmm. to make um, raid and harassment and all sorts of things. Hmm. It's a pretty old British era law, hmm. though it has been uh, modified twice, but not much. Just uh, uh, I should say, basic tenets of the act hmm. still goes against the interest of the sex workers as well as for their children. Is there a legal battle on this? Uh, is there some kind of... Yeah, I think Durbar has uh, already put a well, battle in the court, okay. which is uh, it's a PIN and some other yeah. court cases we are like to place it. But you see, to go to court and it requires oh. money, people, and you see, today court things is quite costly. Yeah. Even for this Duda Puja to get to the court, <laughs> somehow good get the help of some lawyer. Good lawyer who didn't actually charge money to us but okay. as such it's it's difficult. Difficult, yeah. yeah. So thank you. Thanks. Thanks.